can you imagine how your lovemaking might change if you came into the equation knowing that you are love and not in an airy fairy, lighthearted, you know, um, like in a really rich, grounded way that this, that if you've ever had a moment where you get that flavor of, I am so loved, it comes in an instant and then maybe it's gone because life happens. But if you've ever had one of those moments where you get that, oh, wow, that's love, this is love, whether it's from an animal or from the sun on your face or from an interaction with another person and you feel that vibrancy, how might that change what you bring into the bedroom if that was your ground? If you were really rooted in those sensations, that can really shift. Um, it can really change everything about what we bring into lovemaking because I don't know about you, but I'm gonna be very, very human here. And hopefully that will give you permission to be very human too, is um, there are definitely little girl wounded parts of me that come into the bedroom with me. And that's okay, she's welcome. And, um, you know, there's no problem, but it's something interesting to explore and to be aware of. And, and so it, when I'm coming into lovemaking with like, please love me, what, do you like what I'm doing? Is this okay? Is it good? Do you like it? It's my internal voice, okay? It's not what I'm leading with when I'm in the bedroom, but I'm just saying, you know, the little part of me, this unconsciously like, is it enough? Am I good enough? Do you love me? Will you love me if I do this? Will you love me if I bring this? There's that you know, little girl who was left behind, you know, who didn't, didn't get what she needed from her dad, you know, we don't have to psychoanalyze it, but um, is very different than when I come into the bedroom feeling my vitality, my aliveness, my love, the love that I am made of, I, a very different dynamic takes place. And of course, the wider truth is that it's all going to be included that I will have moments and hopefully all of you will have moments and these practices have supported me so much in just bringing that vibrant love and wholeness to my lovemaking experience. And one of the side flow, uh, side benefits of that is that I'm able to say what I need without worrying that I'll be left. And I'm able to not, my feelings aren't hurt if my partner doesn't receive it well. And I'm able to get more of what I need and want and what deeply satisfies me and allows me to go deeper because I'm confident to own what I need and want and to have whatever dialogue needs to happen in order to um, accomplish that together. And then on the other side of that, even in some ways, knowing that ground of love and that ground of vibrancy also gives me the capacity to be able to say, um, to be able to, to say to my lover, hey, I'm feeling really scared right now, if that's what's come in the room with me. It also gives me the strength to say, wow, I'm feeling super needy and or I need to I need to stop and just take a couple of deep breaths because um, I'm I'm not feeling I'm I'm shutting down. So even even knowing having these touchstones of practices where we get that um, deeper vibration that imprint of feeling love in our body when when the practice works that way for us little by little that sows the seeds that even when we will always be whole and um, that wholeness may include insecurity, a bad day, uh, fucked upness, manipulation, even kids manipulate, right? We're, we're, it's about getting our needs met. And there's a lot of this human stuff, but even having this ground of having felt that vibration of love inside of us and nurturing it through a practice like this can then give us the courage to have that self-awareness and be honest about it, accept ourselves and love ourselves even within that. It's so hard, but it's so, um, but it becomes more and more possible by being supported by these very simple practices and make a real difference.